Patch 10.1 is finally here, and with it comes some of the most impactful and controversial changes we've ever seen to PvP, like reducing crowd control duration across the board, critical strikes being reduced, and even precog being obtainable for any caster. Of course, as with any new patch, we've got tons of balance changes to almost every spec to go along with it. Which spec will be the new Ret Paladins of 10.1? How screwed are Fist Weavers after the nerfs? We've got all this and much more to break down as we bring you guys a complete look at the 10.1 Solo Shuffle tier list put together with the help of our rank 1 consultants. But first, if you're anything like me, every update or new patch that happens presents a ton of new questions, like how's my spec doing, what gear do I want, or how good is this new talent? What's frustrating though, is that unless you're lucky enough to have your favorite PvP streamer notice you spamming in their chat, finding answers to these types of questions can be near impossible. If only a place existed where you had direct contact to some of the best players in the world. A place where you could simply click on a button, write any PvP related question imaginable, and have it answered within just minutes. Oh, if only. <coughs> Dan, wake up. Stop daydreaming. You're quite literally describing the exact service we offer to all skill cap members in our Ask a Pro channel. Ugh, whoa, where'd you come from? So, you're telling me, in addition to all the amazing content over on the site, like those up-to-date damage guides and in-depth videos on key fundamentals, I also get direct access to the pros on top of that? What's the catch? There isn't one, Dan. All skill cap subscribers are backed up by a rank up guarantee, meaning if you don't significantly improve while actively using our service, then you get your money back. No questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below and get the rating you've always wanted this season. Well, let's get back to the video. Just as a small disclaimer before we get into the tier list, it's key to note that we're going to be basing our placements off early season, which will not be including tier sets. Starting off with the melee tier list, one spec that's becoming a whole lot stronger with 10.1 is Feral Druid. Numerous PvE focused buffs are the main source of this rise in strength, including huge damage increases to pretty much all rotational abilities, as well as a beneficial change to Berserk. On top of that, Feral's also gained access to one of the most powerful PvP talents we've seen to date, Wild Attunement. Enabling Ferals to now opt to play Cyclone and be massively rewarded for utilizing it. Feral was set to for sure be S tier for the beginning of the season, but we did however see some slight tuning after 10.1's initial release to tone down the power of both Rampant Ferocity and Tear Open Wounds. So all things considered, we're going to be placing Feral inside of our A plus tier, going up one rank with the patch. That being said, Feral is a spec that definitely has the potential to be one of the best melee this season, so could easily take that S tier spot. The spec making the biggest climb this patch is without a doubt Enhancement Shaman. Enhance has been a bottom of the barrel, almost non existent melee for the entirety of Season 1, but this is all set to change come the release of Season 2. As they've received a 5% buff to damage across the board, including a 50% increase to Wind Fury weapon, as well as some previously weak talents being greatly enhanced, like Thorum's Invocation, which now goes on to buff the damage of Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning, making for some ridiculous Chain Lightning focus builds. One of the most overlooked changes though is definitely Flame Shock's Dispel Protection becoming baseline. Flame Shock is effortlessly spread to almost all targets, and now will make healers suffer upwards of 50k damage for just pressing Dispel. Not only that, but brand new PvP talents are also having a huge impact on the spec, like Seasoned Winds being available to pick up, as well as now lasting 18 seconds and stacking up to 3. This makes Enhancement practically immortal against casters, as you're able to get up to a 45% damage reduction if you're consistent with interrupts. Then we've got Stormweaver, which changes the whole dynamic of the spec, making it so that you no longer get punished for spending Maelstrom on healing, where previously it was rare if you could ever spend Maelstrom on damage throughout a game. And of course, we couldn't not not bring up Burrow, another new PvP talent making high burst melee much easier to deal with. Overall, Enhancement seems to have the full package right now, and even despite having no form of healing reduction, can dominate any lobby they're put into, and is set to only get stronger later in the season. For this reason, we'll be bumping Enhancement up from B tier all the way up to A plus tier, with the potential to place it much higher later in the season. 10.1 seemed to be all about buffing those underperforming specs, as another melee climbing the ranks is Fury Warrior. This comes thanks to a rather nice 6% nerf to one of their primary damaging abilities in Bloodthirst, as well as more importantly a huge buff to Slaughterhouse. Those of you who don't know, this is one of the most important PvP talents for Fury, as it provides their mortal strike effect. Previously, due to its low duration, it could very easily fall off, but with this change, it's going to be much easier to maintain. For this reason alone, we're going to be bumping up Fury to A tier, up from B. 
When we heard crowd control was being reduced, like most people, we assumed Subtlety Rogue was going to be wiped out of existence. That couldn't be further from the truth though, as the buffs are coming in force, with major increases to Eviscerate, Secret Technique, Gloom Blade, Shadow Strike, and Eviscerate, and even a 4% damage buff across the board. Then for talents, both Thief's Bargain and Night Stalker have been greatly improved, as previously prior to 10.1, Night Stalker was bugged and didn't even provide any benefit, whereas Thief's Bargain not only now also works with Vanish, but also has has much less of a damage penalty. And we've yet to even mention Veil of Midnight. This has honestly left quite a lot of PvP players speechless, as it turns Cloak of Shadows into basically Blessing of Protection, meaning alongside having an additional evasion, you can even look to remove abilities like Touch of Karma and Death Mark. So overall, sure, the CC changes have some effect, with Kidney being reduced and Blind into Sap no longer being possible. But all that means is you have to do Kidney into Blind into Sap instead. And even then, Burst During Dance is arguably going to be even stronger, as Cheap Shot wasn't touched. For early season, we're going to be moving Subtlety up from B tier to A+, but is one spec that again has the potential to be much higher later in the season with the addition of tier sets. This leaves especially the middle of our melee tier list looking drastically different for Season 2. At the top, we've still got Arms Warrior, who after very few changes will continue to be one of the most well-rounded melee for Solo Shuffle. Then in our A-plus tier, Retribution Paladins will be dropping down from S tier, primarily due to a shift in the meta to be more caster heavy. Joining Subtlety, Enhance, and Feral Druid. Looking at our A tier, Havoc Demon Hunter will also be moving up one rank after receiving some damage increases to I Beam, Fell Blade, Demon Blades, and even standard auto attacks. It's also worth noting that due to crowd control being far less impactful, specs that previously were quite vulnerable to dying inside of stuns, like Demon Hunter for instance, all get slightly more durable. At the bottom of our list, Unholy Death Knight, who even after some new PvP talents like Blood Forged Armor, still remain to have a lot of the same struggles they had previously in Season 1. One spec you should definitely keep your eye on though is Outlaw Rogue. It's slightly too early and there just isn't enough data to give a solid opinion just yet, but given the changes, we wouldn't be surprised if Outlaw climbs at least one to two tiers in our next list. If there's one range spec looking strong going into Season 2, it's Balanced Druid. So much so, in fact, that it's probably more appropriate to rename the spec to Not So Balanced Druid. As after receiving massive balance changes, I've said balance way too many times now, <clears throat> Moonkins received huge increases to most damaging abilities, including Star Surge and Starfall. On top of buffs to a lot of the go-to talents for PvP, including Stellar Flare, Power of Goldrin, and Denizen of the Dream. Also, something overlooked is that due to the baseline reduction in crowd controls, Cyclone was one of the few abilities that didn't get touched, making it by far the most powerful crowd control we have in the game now. Has to be said that Precog becoming baseline is another very beneficial change, as with multiple schools of magic and easy to fake Cyclones with Alkin Adept, Moonkins are one of the best at utilizing the now embellishment. Overall, Moonkins dish out unrivaled damage, are one of the most durable casters, and have some of the most potent crowd control. And really, in a scenario like Shuffle, are good with all types of classes, be that with melee or casters alike. For these reasons, we'll be moving Balanced Druids to S tier up from A. Another spec gaining some huge traction for Season 2 is Destruction Warlock. Warlocks as a whole got some very nice PvP talents with 10.1, most notably being Impish Instincts greatly helping with mobility whenever trained. Alongside buffs to Call Observer, which although busted right now will probably only remain that way until the next week or a pack comes out. In terms of damage, despite the nerfs to critical strikes obviously impacting Chaos Bolt, this has been offset with base damage increases to the ability alongside further buffs to both Conflag and Shadow Burn. What has historically always made casters strong is when you've got that perfect combination of both high instant damage, but are still a huge threat when left free. Destruction, especially with Precog becoming baseline, has it all. As they're impossible to shut down thanks to Conflag, Shadow Burn, and Backdraft procs, and then if you leave them free or miss a kick, one or two Chaos Bolts can still quickly close out a game. For these reasons, we predict Destruction Warlocks to be the new premier Warlock spec for Season 2, and we'll be moving up from A plus tier to S tier. Ah, Shadow Priests. It seems Blizzard just doesn't know what to do with this spec. I don't think we've ever seen so many complete overhauls to one spec in such a short time span. But how are they doing? Well, to sum up the huge wall of text changes, the best way to describe it would be that Shadow Priests have gone from a spec revolving entirely around playing whack-a-mole with three different types of procs 
to now a more casting heavy spec, primarily focused around void turret for the majority of their burst damage. Overall though, dots hit harder, devouring plague hits like a truck, and any channeled ability now does impactful damage. Everything does a lot more damage. But with the loss of damnation and instant void form, it's definitely changed the dynamic of the spec. It's fair to say that at the moment, it seems like it's for the better, as now you're actually rewarded for casting more so than ever before. Whereas previously, quite frankly, it didn't really even matter if you were able to cast or not, as you didn't really contribute much other than crowd control either way. Precog being easily accessible and crowd control being reduced undeniably helps out here as well. As for ranking, Shadow Priest has the potential to be very good in Season 2 and in very capable hands could potentially be an S tier spec. But with how easy they are to shut down, Shadow Priest could very easily end up becoming a victim spec in certain melee heavy solo shuffle lobbies. So all things considered, we're going to be placing them inside of our A plus tier, moving up one rank from last patch. What a surprise, Sub Rogue's looking strong, and Fire Mage got massively buffed. Huh, wonder if these two had a strong composition they could play. Fire has been the bottom of the barrel mage spec for the majority of Season 1, but this is all set to change. Pyro, Fire Blast, Fireball, and even Scorch damage have all been improved drastically with PvE targeted buffs, on top of further PvP buffs improving some of the same abilities even more. One key change here being the improvements to the Glass Cannon talent, which now offers a further 60% damage increase to both Fireball, Scorch, and Ignite. For coordinated gameplay, especially now with the addition of the new PvP talent, Master Shepard, we wouldn't be surprised if Fire becomes one of the best casters, period. But as this is a solo shuffle tier list, you don't always have that same level of coordination that Mage demands. Nonetheless, we'll be moving up Fire Mage from our bottom tier of B all the way up to A plus tier for Season 2. For the complete range tier list, Beast Mastery Hunter remains in our S tier spot, looking relatively the same in terms of strength, with the only real changes being Roar of Sacrifice now being baseline for all specs in addition to a big buff to Dire Basilisk. Pet survivability has also been improved, with Revive Pet now being non-interruptible, as well as Mend Pet healing being massively increased. The crowd control changes hurt Hunter more so than most specs, as it now requires you to be within 30 yards to secure a freezing trap out of Intimidation Stun. Realistically though, Beast Mastery is the one Hunter spec that can reliably threaten kills even without having the need for trap. Looking at our A plus tier, Demonology Warlock will remain to be strong in Season 2, but nowhere near as dominant as they were in Season 1. After the removal of Spell Lock and a rather disappointing change to Master Summoner, making Dead Stalkers require a cast time. Frost Mage got some slight damage buffs to offset the nerf to critical strike damage and should remain around similar strength to Season 1. Elemental Shamans however got a ton of new additions like Burrow, but with the removal of Control of Lava being replaced by Volcanic Surge is attempting to push Elemental into a more of a cast oriented lightning build. For now though, they're performing at around the same level of strength, but this could change. At the bottom of our tier list, Devastation of Ochre is looking to be slightly stronger with the patch, receiving some additional haste on Empowers and decent new PvP talents, most notably being having a variation of Ice Wall attached to Deep Breath. But despite being slightly stronger, we've not seen enough data to warrant putting them any higher on this list, at least for now. We all knew it was only a matter of time, and shortly after 10.1 was released, hotfixes were pushed out to nerf Fist Weavers to the ground. These come in the form of a 30% nerf to Ancient Teachings, which is the talent that makes Fist Weaving possible, as well as a 40% nerf to the damage of Blackout Kick, 20% nerf to the damage of Rising Sun Kick, and 15% nerf to the damage of Tiger Palm. Overall, these are far more substantial than they look, as not only does it nerf the overall healing of Fist Weaving, but also then the damage which equated to healing as well. Meaning this is a two prong nerf that double dips and the result equates to around a 30 to 60% nerf to overall healing depending on which ability you're using. Fist Weavers despite these monstrous nerfs will still be playable, which above all else is just testament to how overpowered they were. Now though the spec will be far more matchup specific and primarily played into just rot damage rather than every single matchup. For this reason we'll be dropping Fist Weaving down two tiers to A. You asked and we listened. For all future tier lists going forward, we'll be separating standard casted Mist Weaver and Fist Weavers into two separate specs with their own individual ranking. When one door closes, another one opens. And with the obliteration of Fist Weaving, Mist Weavers are climbing the ranks as one of the most dominant healers in Solo Shuffle right now. As previously in Season 1, Mist Weaver was already on the cusp of being strong, but just massively overshone by the power of Fist Weaving as a whole. 10.1 brings a ton of great new additions, such as Chrysalis, which was previously 
obviously a must-have talent, reducing the cooldown of Life Cocoon now being made default. This then opens up room for Zen Spheres. This is probably the most slept on new addition in 10.1. Not only does it passively increase all healing to any friendly target of your choosing by 15%, but also then you can debuff an enemy to also take 10% more damage from all sources and deal 10% less damage to you. This combined with Mystic Touch is basically giving any physical damage dealer on your team a permanent Dark Archangel you can swap around freely. Mistweaver had already been getting slight buffs for the last few patches now in an attempt to make it more of a favorable choice compared to Fist Weaving, but further 10.1 buffs to both Vivify and Renewing Mist on top of Precog being made default now should honestly make casted Mistweavers one of the best healers right now. For now, we'll be initially placing them into our A plus tier, but can very easily climb to S tier if the meta suits them. Restoration Druids have got something they've been asking for since the introduction of PvP. 10.1 introduces the much-anticipated Reactive Resin, a redesign of the talent to now make it so that purging a Restoration Druid's healing over time effects will come with a drawback. That drawback being a stacking slow that once stacked will silence the target for 3 seconds. Now this obviously doesn't remove the ability to purge altogether, but what it does help combat is specs capable of spamming offensive dispels and holding it down leaving no room to recover. However, the rework of Reactive Resin means losing a previously common played talent that considerably increased throughput, making its arrival a double-edged sword. That in mind, Restoration Druid, while definitely lacking in the later end of Season 1, does receive some minor increases to healing, with a 2% overall increase and 5% increase to regrowth. As a whole, Restoration Druid is looking to be marginally stronger going into Season 2, and will be moving up one tier to our a tier. Later into the season, especially once tier sets are obtainable, we do expect Restoration Druid to be one of the most dominant healers. Taking a look at our completed healer recap, it's looking very similar to before 10.1, but the only healer left inside of our S tier is now Disciplined Priest, who in 10.1 received only few changes, most notably being Dome of Light now being baseline, freeing up a previously must-have PvP talent which can now be filled with either the new Phase Shift or other strong talents. Preservation of Ochres received no direct changes, so will be remaining inside of our A plus tier. One thing to note is that the loss of their tier set may end up having some lasting effects, as it was integral for both healing and damage output, so could end up dropping down a tier if the meta ends up being damage heavy. Restoration Shamans are also in the same boat in terms of receiving limited balance changes aside from some decent new PvP talents, but overall should remain around the same level of strength. Then at the lower end of our tier list, Holy Paladins received some buffs to casted healing, but at the cost of Avenging Crusader being nerfed. Sadly though, still seem to be struggling with both throughput and mana issues. Before we wrap things up, we want to tell you about another exciting new feature at SkillCap.com. For a limited time, SkillCap members can submit their gameplay to be reviewed by Rank 1 Gladiators, who will watch through arena footage and give personalized advice for how to improve. These reviews are added to our hundreds of arena commentaries and are quickly becoming one of the best resources for hitting your goals and getting the rating you've always wanted. Last season, we helped thousands of PvPers hit their rating goals from Challenger all the way up to Rank 1. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links in the description below to start your journey today. So there you have it guys, a complete update on the Solo Shuffle tier list for patch 10.1 and start of Arena Season 2. Thank you for watching, and from everyone here at Skillcapped, we hope you have a great day.